Close your eyes and watch your breath. Make that your center. And the rest of your awareness revolves around that. For the mind to have any stability, it requires a center like this. Otherwise it moves around very quickly, gets pushed around very easily. The image of the given the canon is of a stone pillar, sixteen spans long, eight spans buried in the rock, so that the wind comes from any direction, it's not going to make the pillar shake. The winds of the world are really, really strong, and they come from all directions. And if you're not careful, they can spin you around and send you off someplace else. So you've got to have a strong sense of this is your center right here, right when the mind and the body meet at the breath, right here in the present moment. When you have a strong center like this, then you have a clear sense of what's north, south, east, and west. In other words, you can gauge your situation, gauge your actions as to what's really right, what's really wrong. If you're off-center, then your ideas of right and wrong are not that reliable. especially when you're coming from a position of weakness or a position of hunger. So give the mind some strength. Give it a place to stay right here. Feed it well with good breath energy. Feed it well with thoughts of goodwill. Because goodwill is something you can have for everybody. What it basically means is that you wish for all beings to understand the causes for true happiness and be willing and able to act on them. And that's something you can wish for anybody. And if you hold that intention in mind, then it makes it a lot easier to deal skillfully with other people, not get blown around by their words and their actions. There's a case in the canon where Sariputta has an old student who he hasn't seen for many years, and he's discovered the student's not practicing anymore. He's become a tax collector, and as they say, he cheats the people in the name of the king and cheats the king in the name of the people. And Sarabhata goes to see him and says, well, why are you doing this? And the man says, well, I've got my wife now, a new wife, and I've got new parents-in-law, and I've got my old parents. I've got to take care of all these people. And Sarabhata says, okay, your actions are your actions, no matter who you do them for, or what you do them in reaction to. Your actions are going to be your actions when the hell guardians come and drag you down. And if you say, I did this for the sake of my wife and my parents, don't throw me into hell. What are they going to do? They're going to throw you into hell while you're complaining right there. In other words, you've got to take responsibility for your actions. You can't say, well, I did this because so-and-so mistreated me. Their mistreatment of you is their business. You've got to make sure that your actions are upright, straightforward. And for that kind of stolidity in the mind, it requires that you have a good, solid place to stay place of well-being. That's why we work with the breath, to make it comfortable as you breathe in, breathe out. You have a sense that this is your home, and nothing's going to push you away from it. When you have that kind of solidity, then you can trust yourself a lot more.